LIDAR is becoming more and more of a topic for offshore wind as we try to understand what's happening to the wind before they hits the turbines and the interference from one turbine to another. And uh, there seems to be some concern about MET towers, putting MET towers out in the ocean and how to do that. And it's kind of expensive. And do we need more accurate wind measurements? Well, Vaisla's WindCube uh, nacelle-based LIDAR system, uh, they've been doing some work on it and trying to hone it in and make it super precise. and. There's a good article in PES Wind Magazine walking through the process they did. It took about a year to, to do some actual measurements and comparisons. But the, I'm trying to understand exactly what you're measuring with LIDAR here, because it sounds like they're measuring what they call turbulence intensity. And I'm, I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds like uh, they're trying to basically steer the wind turbine in the right direction, maybe to minimize turbulence into the turbine or to turn the turbine in front of the turbine you're on to minimize the impact that one turbine has on another. I'm sure it's not great for the blades and all the, the load structures there. Phil, what is, the, what is the purpose of these turbulence intensity measurements and what are they trying to avoid here with this LIDAR system? The nacelle mounted LIDAR is a great idea uh, conceptually at least, because what it does is it puts your uh, wind speed direction and the turbulence intensity measurement at hub height. And so the turbulence intensity is basically measuring kind of how much swirl and churn you get uh, both upwind and downwind of the rotor. Um, and it, it can, as you've indicated, you can get you know, an increase in turbulence intensity from the turbines being pointed in a particular direction. Um, certainly, you get this more onshore than you would necessarily offshore. Uh, onshore, you can have kind of complex terrain um, where, you know, the the wind is kind of uh, going gently across the plains. And then if you have like a bunch of rocks and things that are in the way, it can, it can cause um, you know, and, and uh, upswirl of, of um, the wind and, and it can, you know, have impacts on the loads. It can, you know, on the tower, the rotor, etc. cetera. Um, so it, it's something that you need to be able to measure. And if you can measure it, then you can predict the behavior. And if you can predict, then you can control, um, you know, you can alter pitch and yaw, etc. cetera. Um, but again, having an nacelle mounted system gives you the ability to kind of look out ahead of the rotor and anticipate what's going to happen before it happens. A lot of time, um, especially with older turbines, um, you, you only have the ability to do kind of a reactionary control um, action. Uh, so, you know, it's like you're, you will be able to detect gust of wind is happening once it's already started. The LIDAR gives you the ability to look forward um, and determine that, you know, a, an incoming gust may be uh, about to hit, um, uh, you know, one turbine or one is that's upwind of another. And it gives you the, the option to be able to uh, better control the, the entire wind farm, maintain your output, control your loads, um, and, and just generally improve the, the quality of your, your performance. Um, so it's a, it's a great idea. Would you end up putting a light on every turbine on an offshore farm, or do you just strategically place a couple and then sort of average out the data? How, I, I, I don't know how that system even works because the Met Tower system we have right now is like one sample off in the wilderness somewhere. The LIDAR is going to give you a lot better data, right? Right. And the one thing with offshore is that we've actually been using floating LIDAR um, mounted on kind of buoy systems um, to do not only site assessment, um, but I know there's a couple of projects in the UK where they're actually using it for um, this kind of upwind, um, you know, early detection and, and park control. Um, but you don't actually need one uh, necessarily mounted on every nacelle. Um, the advantage of the ability to st strategically place them is um, you could have them mounted on, you know, like if you have, if you look at a wind rose and you have kind of a prevailing wind direction where a lot of the incoming wind is coming from, then you might pick like two or three or four turbines in that row if you happen to have them, you know, organized that way. Um, you could pick turbines that way. But a lot of project sites, they might not have, you know, a single kind of 
uh, prevailing wind direction. So, you know, you might need to strategically place these things on uh, on multiple turbines. Um, but again, having the, the measurements being done at hub height actually helps improve the quality of the measurement if you can avoid um, the issues that you've run into in the past with the, the blade shadow. So basically when the blade swoops by a nacelle mounted LIDAR, it's going to block the, the thing from being able to detect um, further further afield. Um, so my understanding with this is that they've made certain improvements to their technology to be able to get a higher quality turbulence intensity, wind speed, and wind direction measurement uh, coming from the, the nacelle mounted LIDAR. So again, really, really great concept. Yeah, I think it's a good concept. It's just amazing to me that we still use mechanical anemometers on some really big machines. It seems like it, it's just not the right instrument to do something really complicated with a very expensive product. You'd want to have more accurate measurements. And I know I've seen, have you, if you've, I've seen the ultrasonic anemometers, which are really cool, but LiDAR is like next level, right? It's like the coolest thing on the block. And I, I'm guessing that a lot of operators are going to be thinking about this. Uh, and if you want to learn more about it, I read it in PES Win Magazine. So the latest PES Win Magazine has a full discussion and all the details in there. Uh, there's, e there's even a really good picture of the LiDAR mounted on the nacelle. And if you notice real carefully, they have a grounding cable there. Like it may get struck by lightning. So I hope it doesn't get struck by lightning. <laughs> Otherwise, the nacelle's getting smoked. But yeah, it, it's, a, it's a really cool uh, piece of technology that I think we're going to see more of going forward. So check out PES Win Magazine to get all the details. 